Hey guys, it's Amanda. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner where I share what I fed my family throughout the week to hopefully give you some meal inspiration for you and your family. This week I have six different dinner ideas, so let's hop in. Alright, first up we have a tried and true crock pot chicken and gravy. I make this all the time and it is so good. So in my crock pot I have my three chicken breasts. You can make however many you need. I topped it with some chicken gravy mix as well as some of this garlic and herb dash seasoning. It is so good. It makes like my life so much easier to do one shake of seasoning than like a bunch. Um, and also some parsley. And then I'm just going to add some water, just enough to almost cover the chicken. The more water you add, the more gravy you'll have. So just eyeball it to how much you need. You're going to cover and cook on low for six hours or on high for four hours. So on the side, I wanted some roasted veggies. So I have some chopped zucchini, some chopped asparagus, and some random veggies that I had chopped up in my fridge. So some radishes, carrots, broccoli, and peppers. And then I'm having mine with some rice cauliflower and I don't like soggy rice cauliflower so I like to either throw it on a frying pan and like toast it up or I'm putting it on the baking sheet because I'm throwing the rest of the veggies in there. And it makes it like a fried rice texture and it's really good. So I'm tossing that with some olive oil and more of that garlic herb seasoning and then I'm going to cook at these at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. Alright, once the veggies are done, I'm going to take a peek at my chicken. You also want to salt and pepper this however you see fit. I always add pepper to everything and I kind of forget to mention it sometimes. But your chicken should be super tender like that and you'll have lots of gravy to put over your rice or mashed potatoes, whatever you want to do. I'm doing some white instant rice for my family. And this is how the veggies will look when they come out. So let's plate this up. Here I'm making my husband's plate because it was prettier with the regular rice, but I promise if you don't like cauliflower rice, try toasting it up and making it crispy. Even if you have a waffle maker, if you put one of those little mini waffle makers, put the rice in that and I promise it is so good. And we're going to top this with tons of gravy and this is one of our very easy tried and true recipes that is good every time. Alright, next up we're going to make this super fun TikTok quesadilla. So I just have some chicken cooking that I season with all of these seasonings. And then once the chicken is almost done, I'll throw in my veggies. I have some jalapenos, some peppers, and some onions. And then once they are soft, I'll add my super tender zucchini in there. So if you're on TikTok, I'm sure you've seen this quesadilla trending. What makes it so cool is the way it's folded. So you're just going to cut it like halfway through. I just have a bunch here for my whole family. And then put different toppings on each one. I like to put cheese on the entire thing so it gets toasty and melty in between each layer and then they all kind of stick together but you do whatever you like. I also have some Taco Bell quesadilla sauce on there, some sour cream and some guacamole. I spray mine with some cooking spray and throw it in the air fryer and they're super fun take on quesadillas. Alright next up I'm making a bruschetta pasta. So to get started on our sauce we're going to need lots of garlic chopped up. I'm adding that to a pan along with some butter and olive oil and we're going to cook this low and slow so the garlic infuses into that olive oil and butter and makes an awesome base for the sauce. Next we're going to chop up some tomatoes and red onion. For the tomatoes you want to remove most of the seeds on the inside so it's not super wet if you know what I mean. And then we're going to add those tomatoes and onions right to the garlic butter once your house starts smelling super good. That's when you know it's ready. And I'm also seasoning that with some Italian seasoning and some red pepper flakes. You would also add some chopped fresh basil at this point but my Walmart was out. So I had to kind of admit it. But what I like to do is just take my pasta right from the pasta water directly into the tomatoes and onions so that some of that pasta water will go in and mix in with that. And then it creates the perfect sauce. Then I'm adding this to my plate and making sure I have lots of tomatoes and onions on top. And then a drizzle of olive oil and balsamic vinegar with some Parmesan cheese on top and it is perfect. All right, and next up I'm making some honey mustard chicken thighs. So to get started, I'm just placing my chicken thighs out on a cutting board and then I'm gonna season them up with some onion, garlic powder, paprika, salt and pepper, and parsley. 
I'm gonna place these seasoned side down in a hot pan with oil. Don't forget to season your other side and we're just worrying about crisping the outside. We don't need them to be done. Then in my baking dish, I'm adding some baby potatoes as well as some broccoli. And then I'm gonna nestle my little chicken thighs right in there. Then we're just gonna set that baking dish aside and get ready to make our sauce. So in that same pan we cooked our chicken in, you're gonna add some water or chicken broth, white wine, whatever you wanna do to break up those bits at the bottom of the pan. They're gonna add so much flavor. And then I'm gonna add some garlic, some Dijon mustard, and some honey. And this is gonna be all to your preference. You can give it a taste, see if you want more honey or less honey, and then just build off of that. Once the sauce has simmered on low and thickened up, we can add it on top of our chicken. I'm adding a few pats of butter to the top just to give it a more richer flavor. I'm gonna cover this with foil and bake at 375 for 45 minutes to an hour just till those potatoes are cooked and those chicken thighs are cooked through. Then I'll pull the foil off and either broil it or leave it in the oven for a little bit just so those tops of your chicken thighs get crispy. That's the way we like it. And then we're gonna plate this up and don't forget to add lots of honey mustard sauce to your whole plate. All right, next we're gonna make some tortellini soup. So in my pot here with some olive oil, I have some chopped celery, onion, and carrots. We're gonna season that up with some garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasonings, parsley, and salt and pepper. And then we're just gonna cook those down until they're tender. Next, we're gonna add some Italian sausage. If you can't find ground Italian sausage, just buy the links and remove the casings. And then you can just break it up in your pan and it works just fine. So we're gonna cook the sausage through and then we're gonna add a half a quarter-ish block of cream cheese, whatever I have here. I'm using light cream cheese this time and it worked out great, as well as a few tablespoons of minced garlic. Cook that down and this will make a bomb dip <laughs> just like this, but I'm adding a chicken bouillon cube and then some diced tomatoes as well as some chicken broth. Once that comes up to a boil, you can add in some spinach or kale. We did spinach as well as your frozen tortellinis. I grabbed these ones at Walmart and they're super cheap and they're super good. Tortellinis can be expensive, so just trying to save you a buck. These are really good. And then I'm gonna cook these until the tortellinis are tender, which does not take long at all. And then I'm gonna put this in a bowl. My kids are only here for the tortellinis. I don't know about anybody else, but they are not interested in tomatoes, the broth, the spinach. So I try to give them mostly tortellinis and then the rest is for me and my husband. But I always top this with some Parmesan cheese and it is definitely one of my favorite soups in the winter. All right, next up, I'm making some spaghetti squash, like a white sauce with some chicken and broccoli. It's definitely a lighter version of Alfredo. So to get started, I'm just gonna roast my spaghetti squash with some of this garlic and herb seasoning and some olive oil. I'm flipping them upside down, throwing them in a 425 degree oven until they are fork tender. They're gonna look like this. You'll be able to take your fork and drag it and pull away all the spaghetti like little stringies in there. I'm gonna be using a shortcut and using these Purdue chicken strips. I like to chop mine up. We can totally leave them in strips. We love these for salads and wraps for lunches too. But I get them at BJ's and you get a lot, so I like to throw them in some dinners when I can. And again, we're gonna do that garlic infused butter. I'm telling you, you put this on anything and it's so good. So I have some butter, some chopped garlic, lots of chopped garlic, and some olive oil. We're gonna do this low and slow, let it infuse, and then we're gonna season that up with some onion powder, some Italian seasoning, and some red pepper flakes. Once those seasonings toast up, we're gonna pour in our milk. I'm just eyeballing how much milk I think we'll need based on how much sauce we'll need. You can totally use heavy cream here to get more of Alfredo turnout, or you can add some flour, make a roux, and then add your milk, and then it'll be a little more creamier. Once the milk comes to a boil, I'm stirring in some Parmesan cheese. And once the cheese melts, I'm gonna add in that chicken, give it a stir, you can already tell it's thickened up, and just let that simmer so the chicken gets warm.
All right, so I'm gonna serve this up in a bowl. So I'm gonna place my spaghetti squash on the bottom. You can see how crispy the edges are. It's super good that way. And then I'm gonna top that with lots of sauce, lots of chicken and cheese on there. And of course, I'm gonna top it with some more Parmesan cheese. And I almost forgot that I roasted some broccoli, so I put that on the side. But you can throw the broccoli right in the sauce as well. I made this with some whole wheat pasta for my kids because they were not feeling the spaghetti squash. But it was still super healthy and flavorful. And that is it for this week's What's for Dinner. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.